Good morning, this is Jay from A Stitch in Time in Bemidji, Minnesota, back for another lesson on the Brother BES4 Dream Edition software. Today we're going to be showing a lesson on how to work with the Convert to Run and the Convert to Applicate tools. These are tools that work with artwork instead of embroidery files, and it's how we can convert them into something we can run out on our embroidery machine. So we're going to be talking how we can take the, our FCM files or SVG files that we would take from our scan and cut and turn them into something we can embroider with as well. And so the first thing we need to do is talk about how we get our artwork. I'm just going to show you briefly here. I'm going to give a little demonstration how I can do something. I'm going to go over to my web browser. And I'm going to go to Google search. I'm going to search for what I what I called here just a loon silhouette. The ice is going off the lakes up here in northern Minnesota, finally. They were just driving on it a week and a half ago here. And here we are the middle of May, and uh, beginning of May, and it's uh, only now going off. And so we, I heard the loons for the first time last night. These are very common here in northern Minnesota. And so what I did is I just right-clicked on this image here, and I went Save Image As, and I saved it onto my computer as a JPEG. Then I went over into my Scan and Cut Canvas. For those of you who do not have a Scan and Cut, that is okay. This program is free to everybody. And you can simply sign up by going to uh, search for Brother Scan and Cut Canvas, and it'll take you where you can sign up for your own free account here. At this place here, I'm going to create a new project, which is where I'm at right now. And then there is a tool here. It's called Image Tracing. And when I click on this, I, I can either use pay for their premium or I can use their normal tracing. And that's, that's the free one. So I'm going to work with that here this morning. It says choose your file right here. So I'm going to choose that. And now I'm going to look at where I saved that loon outline that I just talked about. Now notice it's a JPEG. So this is a picture. It is not an embroidery file. It is just artwork at this point. So I'll double click on that and it brings it in. It also shows me what the approximate dimensions are on this and it asks me how many colors do I want. I can get into more of this program later but there's only two colors, a white and a black, and I can go preview and it will show me in a highlighted area where where it's going to uh, mark the edges. So I'm going to click OK and do you want to paste into the image work area? Yes. Um, oh, the image cannot be edited or saved. So you can say yes or no, but let's just say yes for right now. And at this point, here is my shape. And now at this point, what I need to do is I need to save this so I can bring it into my BES4 software because this is now artwork. This is just a shape. There is no stitches in this. So to do that, I would click download. And I'm going to download it to my PC. And there it's, it's downloading it. Download it just fine. Um, and I can close out of this. Now, in order to, um, to do this, I'm going to go back over here to my BES4 software. And I need to import that file. Now, when you're working with Scan and Cut Canvas, it's only going to download an FCM file. That's the native cut file for Brother Scan and Cut. You can also import SVG. And so if you go up here to the little blue or the little brother icon up here at the top, and you go down here to import, this is showing you that you're importing artwork. And you can import either FCM or SVG. And so if you have SVG files you've picked up some, from some other place, you can import them as well. If someone has Adobe Illustrator or something like that, they can make those files for you. But I'm going to import FCM. I'm going to go to my Loon that I had downloaded and saved and click open and there is my loon. Now again I want you to notice on the left hand side if I open this up it says this is artwork and it's very important to keep your artwork and your stitches separate or in your at least separate in your mind so you know what it is because if I just tried to take this and save this onto a memory stick and plug it into my machine it wouldn't do anything because it has it reads no stitches this is only artwork. But to convert this to art to stitches there's several ways we can do this. If I click on it, um, it selects it by giving me the handles, and I can then uh, adjust this. Notice down the left-hand side here, bottom left-hand side, as I move this, it shows me what the scale is and what the, dimen the current dimension is. So if I want this to be approximately 6 inches in width, I can bring it down to there, and it will scale my artwork. 
The nice thing about artwork is you can scale it as large or as small as you want without deforming it. And that is very important um, for, for enlarging or, or shrinking things. You want to always do it in artwork as you get it as close as you can in artwork before you convert it into stitches or applique. Generally, I don't like to modify a design uh, above 20%. So I can take a 20% larger, 20% smaller w with embroidery stitches. But when you're in artwork, you like to, you, you can take it as far as you want. So that's why I try and get the artwork as close to your ideal size as possible. So now this is about six inches wide by three inches tall, and now I'm going to go up here to to the tools. Now, if you um, this is your home tab, and so if you click on the tools, there is convert to applique. Now I have a few extra tools in here, and that's because I have the Power Pack installed. If you want to know more about Power Pack, there is um, you can give us a call, but that is an add-on for this program. So now I can simply convert to applique. And now it has turned this into applique. You can see that over here, it's, it now says applique. And if I expand this out, you can see that there's three colors. The first is a placement position. The second is a tack down. And the third is a satin stitch. And so it, it's, it puts a, those in there all automatically. But on the right hand side here, as you can see, this is they did it in a satin stitch. I'm going to turn on my uh, 3D so you can see it a little bit easier online. And if you notice that it, they did this in a satin stitch, well, maybe I don't necessarily want a satin stitch. Maybe I want to do something a little different. In the top right-hand side here is where you have all of your applique um, adjustments that you can do here. And so if I change this, I can change it from a satin stitch to a blanket stitch and hit apply. And notice now it ha now has it converted into a blanket stitch. I can convert it into a motif stitch, and there's a whole bunch of different motifs here that you can use with it as well, and that will do it. Or I can also turn it into just a plain run stitch, and we're going to talk about this a little more later, but you can change it into a single run, a double run, or a bean stitch, and apply that, and now I just have simple... Um, straight stitches straight running that's how you would do your applique but for the sake of we're going to go for sake of the lesson this morning we're going to go with a satin stitch and apply that so you can see this here your stitch length is how uh, when you're doing a running stitch how long do you want that stitch length to be and this is important if you're depending on what type of fabric you're using that it's not too close that it cuts your fabric if you're using a, a vinyl or a film something like that and but it's just how quick do you want to get around it how firmly do you want to anchor that if you are trimming your material in place you know you, you don't have a scan and cut and so you're going to trim right around here you want to leave this about 2.0 or even take it a little bit smaller because that's going to hold the material much closer and tighter and you don't have to worry about it fraying out if you take this up to a three three and a half uh, as you trim around here with your scissors, you're going to end up with that fabric fraying out. And I have had, had customers where that has actually torn loose of it, and then it did not get firmly secured when they did the satin stitch around. So it's important that you, if you're going to be trimming it in place, leave this number fairly small. This is the width of your, of your uh, zigzag. And one nice thing to do is if you have a digital sewing machine, what you can do is make several runs of satin stitches and set one to 2.0 millimeters, another one to 2.5, another one to 3.0, another one to 3.5, and make several runs of satin stitches that you can have as a handy reference for how wide do I want this satin stitch to look. One of the things to keep in mind if you're doing a trim in place satin stitch, you need to keep this at least 3 millimeters. 3 millimeters is the absolute minimum. Um, because you need to have enough to firmly secure the edge of that uh, material. And then the density. This is 0.4 uh, millimeters per, per stitch. And that's kind of a standard for satin stitch, but it may vary depending on what you're using for a um, base material, whether it be um, uh, sweatshirt material or stuff like that. And then inset. What this is currently saying is 50% of this applique stitch is on top of the material, 50 of the, of the applique material, 
the other half a percent is out over the edge to anchor it to the sweatshirt, say we're doing it on. And the reason for 50% over is, is that if we trim right up against here, we're not going to be able to get quite right to the very edge. And so you need to have some extra stitch over there to, to grab that extra material that you have. That's why if you set your width too narrow, it's not going to cover up that little ragged edge there from us trimming it. This can also be changed if you have, um, if you're doing a, a pre-cut, you know, like you're cutting this shape out over in the the scan and cut so you're actually going to cut this shape out of a material or vinyl or something like that and you don't need to go over there that far you can reduce this down um, or you can uh, increase this number so that it's going to be like if I go to 75 percent and apply it notice that my whole thing is going to get a little smaller because it is all shifted in a little bit more so so there's only 25 percent hanging over that outside edge and that's what you can do is if you're going to be pre-cutting it. But if you're not pre-cutting it, make sure that you keep this out. And um, tack down offset, placement offset. Placement is going to be right on the line. Tack down offset is going to be half a millimeter under the size of your, of your placement. So that way when uh, it'll, it'll cover it up firmly inside. And then fabric, you can also choose what kind of fabric you're using in here if you want to see that. You know, just for the sake of today, we're going to um, put in here polka dots, and then now you can see where the material is going to be. This is really handy when you're working in this program, so you can see what is material and what is not. It's nice to put a fabric in here. This will not show up on your design, but this is just to help you understand what is being filled in with material, what is being filled in with stitches. So if you're creating a, a whole scene with several different appliques, it's nice to be able to see what is filled in and what is just outlined. And then, of course, you can change your size down here. So that's how you just a basic applique. That's how you would work there. But what there's another function in this that is really nice. I'm going to open up a new, a new tab here. And I'm going to go in to uh, import, cancel out of here, go to import an FCM, and I'm going to go to my in, uh, embroidery album, bear with me here. If you do not know how to make an embroidery album, uh, that is a very useful tool because it's where how I keep track of all my designs wherever I either I create them for someone or I've purchased designs they're all stored in here so I can come back and find them fairly easily so I'm gonna take this this is a FCM this is a cut file it's a beautiful cut file that is uh, designed for cutting out of vinyl and things like that for heat transfer it's it's beautifully done uh, in bags and stuff but I think this would look beautiful as a quilted pattern and so I'd like to turn this into quilting stitches. And this is using the same type of technique. Again, if I expand this out, you can see that this is artwork. This is not stitches. And so there's a, a very quick way, an easy way to do this, is if I go up here to the tools, and right beside the convert to applique is convert to run. And when I click that, it will turn this all into a running stitch. And now you can see over here it says run. Now, I have several tools here as well. I can do a single run, I can do a double run, or a bean stitch. And a bean stitch is where it'll go forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, forward. And so you end up with each stitch has like five, five um, uh, uh, repeats on it. And you can actually set the number of repeats here that you want, whether you want three or five. And I can change it, and that'll give it a heavier look, almost like a hand applique look. Or I can just do a double run if I'm using my embroidery thread. That's going to be a little bit heavier look. Or if I'm going to use King Tut heavier quilting thread, I can just do a single run. The biggest thing is here, what is your stitch length? And this is where if you have a design like this, which with a lot of fine little curves and points, if I have too long of a stitch length, it will cut these off and make these a little bit choppy. And so if I'm using my embroidery thread, I may shorten this down to, I'm just going to say 2.2. Um, .2 and apply that. And it's going to be a little harder to see on the screen here. Um, but what it actually did is it, it smoothed some of these corners out a little bit. So that it's not as, uh, as hard 
or it's, it, it makes the the corners more rounded. If you're using a really thick thread, like a King Tut, you know, thread, you might want to leave this at a minimum of 2.5, because uh, otherwise you get so much packed in there, and you take more of a chance of of shredding and breaking your thread. And then at that point, you can see here's how it all stitches out, and it's going to go through and stitch the whole thing out for you. Well, that's a basic lesson for today. Take care and uh, leave a, questions in the comments below if you have uh, something that needs clarifying.